Afternoon, Cherries fans, and welcome to the latest opposition preview show here on Up the Cherries in All Departments. Before I welcome on my special guest, here's a little bit about our sponsor, Dental on the Bank. find out what they can do for you visit dentalonthebanks.co.uk now after our defeat to arsenal which ended 3-0 we do have a welcome distraction on tuesday night and that is a visit to carrow road to face a norwich side who are currently just outside the top six in the championship albeit there's only five games gone now my guest was last on this show two seasons ago and he was just about to celebrate Norwich being promoted to the Premier League. Of course, in that time, they've been up there and they come back down again. That's what they do. But it is a pleasure to welcome back onto Up the Cherries in all departments, Rob Romans. Afternoon, Rob. How are you, mate? I'm in quite a good mood, Craig. We won on Friday night and um, it's quite nice. We've won two games in a row and I'm just trying to work out the last time we did this because, uh, as you know, my football club is quite good at getting relegated from the Premiership every two years and losing lots of games and, you know, going on a a two-game unbeaten run is a bit of a novelty right now for us. Yeah, fair play. And I think, I'm guessing, the last time you did this was the last time you was in the Championship. Yeah, absolutely right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Are you missing oh, the no. Premier League no, at no, all? Tell a, lie. tell a lie, because last season we beat Everton at home mm-hmm. and Watford away in successive games. I'm fairly certain we did it then, but yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, I mean, lots of last season's just blurred away into um, obscurity where it shall remain, let's say. No, fair enough. Do, do you miss the Premier League or are you thinking, actually, the Championship's the place to be? Where do I begin with answering that one? I don't miss VAR. Yeah. Yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from on that. And even though Arsenal did have a goal chalked out Mm. on Saturday um, against us, um, you know, VAR just ruins the flow of the game. And, of course, we had the Burnley incident. We've had Hawkeye. You name it. And... Yeah, sometimes it, watching the game um, on Saturday mm-hmm. against Arsenal, I did start to think, well, I thought, well, we can't compete with these sort of teams. We can't compete with okay. Arsenal, Man City. We've got Liverpool coming up on Saturday. Um, you know, where do we start? You know, we, we got that win against Villa, but, um, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised if we had been bottom of the league with zero points after four games, would you? Well, to be fair, I mean, if I look at last season, I mean, our opening game was Liverpool at home. Then we had Man City away. And this is it. You come out of those opening games thinking, you know, just try and keep the score down, um, which I think we did to um, some some extent. And uh, this is it. I mean, you're not there to get um, points off those sides. Those are not your battles. I mean, saying that, I mean, when we were in the Premiership 2019-2020, we beat Man City. 
Yeah. And that was right at the start of the season. And I remember going into that game, we had about half our players were out injured. And you thought, oh my God, what's going to happen here? And um, we just tore them apart. Wasn't Timo Pukki um, on the score sheet a couple of times during that game? I'm trying to remember. Cantwell scored, McLean scored, I think. I think Pukki got the other one, yeah. Yeah. Actually, quick question on Cantwell. Mm. What do you make of him? Because, of course, he was on loan here last season. Mm. And he's... You I'm can tell that he's got talent. I about this. I know you're trying to be polite. Mm-hmm. He's okay. got talent, hasn't he? But, you know, he seemed to he seemed to be linked with the likes of Man United and Arsenal at mm-hmm. one point when he was at Norwich. Mm-hmm. And then something happened. He's come on loan to Bournemouth mm-hmm. last season. Um, didn't set the world on the light. No. You know, showed a lot of quality. But then... Yeah. He's gone back to Norwich. He has played in all of the games so far, I believe, hasn't he? He didn't start on um, Friday night against Millwall. Um, okay. But, I mean, if you want my take on Cod, um, Todd Cantwell, it's it's quite simple, really. Um, I think, I, well, I'll, I'll be polite about this. I think it's fair to say that um, he started to believe that he was actually better than he actually was. Um, and, I mean, OK, fine. I mean, we football fans hear all sorts of things all over the time you know all sorts of rumors and things and i mean from our our take on it was attitude problems and this is it i mean he allegedly had fallings out with people at the training ground you know all of that sort of stuff Mm -hmm. um you know dean smith you know allegedly allegedly thought right okay i can't do much for this guy let's ship him out on loan and see if it um gives him a kick at the backside which in fairness it did um, and to be fair, the Todd Cantwell we've seen so far this season has actually been a reasonably good one, albeit it's not the Todd Cantwell which, um, you know, can perform very well on a more regular basis. So, jury's still out for me on him. Let's no. wait and see. Fair enough. Of course, the last time we did this show was two years ago. Um, you... Just being promoted, I believe. Um, we did actually win the game, but you just been promoted, and um, yeah, six nil in the League Cup tie last season. Yes, yes, you did do that last season, and we didn't actually do one of these. So I do apologise for that. Um, maybe we should have done a reaction video to that. Did you go to that game? And what, what was? What did you make of Bournemouth that day? Well, I didn't go to the game, but um, well, this is it. I mean, I you know, paid attention to what was happening on the internet. And to be fair, I didn't really put that much notice into it because, I mean, I would not have expected a Bournemouth side, which I think at that time still had a few premiership players in and also a lot of, you know, lots of high-end championship ones in it to be beaten 6-0 by what, you know, you could be politely describing at the time as a work-in-progress um bottom five premiership side um that's me being very very polite about you know what we were like at that mm-hmm. season and i yeah I, the scoreline did surprise me a little bit and i don't think it's going to be six nil this time it'll be no. seven <laughs> which way though which way yeah. <laughs> well, this is it. I mean, I don't. It's it's a funny one to call, really. I mean, mm. I mean, question number one: Do I, you know, regard Norwich beating Bournemouth in a game like this, or even a, you know, a cup tie in general? I mean, if Norwich win, is it an upset? Well, okay, fine. From the point of view that it's a Championship side beating a Premiership side, in that respect, yes. But to be fair, um, I think. I mean, when I look at both clubs' respective histories over the last seven years. Um, I don't really think it's going to be a massive, um, you know, tremor on the ground if um, Norwich win it on Tuesday night. I just, I I don't think a lot of people really care to tell you the truth. (laughs) No, No. I've got to be honest, with regards to that 6-0 defeat um, last season, I was like, right, okay, we're out of the cup, you know. Mm. You know, we're we're fighting for promotion, and I'm sure you were thinking, you know, the same. Only the other way around, you know, it, that is, you know, if we got knocked out, mm. you know, it's games less, you know, to actually 
for the fight in relegation against relegation. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, to be honest, I wasn't too bothered about it. But um, of course, it well, depends. What kind of like good cup run? I mean, for me, I mean, we've won this competition. Mm. Not since 1985, but we've won it. And, I mean, this is it. We've got quite a proud tradition in it. And one thing I will say, and I do think this does tend to be forgotten about this tournament, is you do have some really good cup runs and you can have some really good nights out in it. I mean, look at Bradford getting to the final nine years ago, for instance. And, I mean, if you ask me, I mean, I mean a championship side beating a premiership side or a League Two you know, side beating a premiership side, which can happen. I mean, it's just as magical watching it happen on a Tuesday night League Cup tie as it is in an FA Cup tie. But then again, people look at the FA Cup and view it that way because it's the FA Cup. So, um yeah, I mean, I don't think people should really devalue it. No, fair enough. Of course, we've already seen, uh, and I believe, and mm. I might be wrong in this, we've already seen 10 championship sides go out yeah. to lower league competition, uh, well, haven't we? Yeah. Um, if I'm right in thinking, which kind of shows that our team's really you know, taking it seriously. But then again, there mm. is opportunities for teams like ourselves and mm. Norwich to actually have that bit of a cup run and, you know, upset some people. Because let's be mm. honest, Norwich has still got a very, very good squad. Yeah. Even though you started quite slowly this season, you, we start you've got slowly. it together. I mean, if I was to compare where we are now with two seasons ago, same games, number of games played, same number of points. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you have got easily one of the strongest sides in the league. I'm guessing the only thing that you expect from Dean Smith this year is promotion. Mm. There's there's no other alternative, is there, really? Well, I'm quite realistic about this. I mean, for me, I think a fair, reasonable, realistic target's got to be the playoffs, at the very least. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when I look at what happened last season, and one thing I will say about Dean Smith is a lot of people still haven't really made their minds up about him for various reasons. And, you know, they're all perfectly valid. Um, I think playoffs is a reasonable target. I mean, when we got relegated under Daniel Farker two years ago, I said playoffs that time as well. Um, As long as we don't get relegated or have um, a really bad season and we end up finishing in the bottom half, um, I don't really fancy watching anything like that again. Um, and I mean, to be fair, I mean, if I look back on last season, I mean, it's quite hard really to bl- blame Dean Smith for what happened because, I mean, if you look at the problems we had with the squad we had, um, the style of play that all predated Dean Smith's arrival. And to be fair, when he came in, um, it was very much a case really trying to put a sticking plaster over a gaping wound, to use mm-hmm. a clean. Um, I mean, if I look at, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go through last season's. Um, it was in you know very much depth and detail but classic example we were probably one of the, I mean out of all the Norwich sides I've seen play I have never seen a side be bullied off the ball so much I mean we didn't press sides at all I mean okay I mean apart from a few notable occasions like when we beat Southampton which was Dean Smith's first game in charge in our first yeah. win of the season but this is it I mean you know, we didn't press sides. Um, we didn't enforce ourselves on anybody. And you know, it, it was just painful watching weeks after, you know, week after week after week, you know, all of these so-called world-class midfielders just going through your midfield like a knife in butter and turning your full-backs inside out, or so your left-backs or your right-backs, whatever formation we were trying to play. And uh, this is it. I mean, we just completely and utterly abandoned our style of play when we got up. Um, we recruited badly to say the least we if you ask me we spread our transfer budget too thin and we spent money on what i would call projects instead of you know trying to actually um spend it on players who might have actually added some value last season so it wasn't a good one to watch no fair enough um is it fun being a norwich fan because of course the there is that view that... you get promoted and releg- or relegated at, you know every <laughs> yeah I mean, exactly I mean, you get value for money. I mean, let's think about it like this. I mean, in the last 10 years, actually, no, I'll tell you an even better one. 10 years ago, 
this time 10 years ago, in fact, 2012, 2013, we had a striker on loan from Spurs. He's called Harry Kane. Mm-hmm. You know the guy I mean? Yep. yep. I remember him. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't very good. Didn't score any goals. Took one look at him and thought, he's not going to make it. He's not going to amount to very much. If he'd stayed with Norwich, he'd have won some silverware by now. He'd have won Championship Player Final in 2015. He'd have won the league, t- you know, he'd have had a league titles win or win a medal in 2019. And he'd have, no, sorry, yeah, yeah, 2018. And he would have had, no, sorry, yeah, it's tw- yeah, 2019. And he would have had one in 2021. What's he won at Spurs? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you, you forgot all the dates there, Rob, because, yeah. of course, <laughs> you've been up and down so often that, you know, it's hard to keep up with it. But no, it is very, very true. At least, you know, he would have had a bit more exciting career. I don't know whether or not he would have played for the England side, but, um, no. yeah. <laughs> but no, I have never thought of that. Um, what do you make of form of so far in, in the Premier League? Because, of course, that opening day win against Villa was outs- outstanding. Um, completely we unexpected. Wins ourselves but last season, but apart from that, it really wasn't much to write home about. It depends on what your definition of outstanding is as, as well, I suppose. But the thing for me about Bournemouth is, I mean, OK, fine, I look at that squad and yes, there are players there last time from you know the previous spell in the Premiership, that helps. Mm. But the worrying thing for me is the amount of investment you've made in your side, mm. which isn't very much, I don't think, from what I've noticed. And no. I, with all due respect, I think Bournemouth are going to be struggling a bit this season. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think 17th, you know, would be an achievement. Um, or is it you anyone who tries to stay up? I've got... See, I thought Leeds be in the bottom three, but I'm not so sure. (laughs) (laughs) They haven't had a bad start. Um, Yeah, I mean, if I was to be very honest about my tips for relegation this season, um, yeah, I'm afraid Bournemouth would have to be in the list. Mm -hmm. Uh, Other side, Everton. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree with Everton are going to struggle. And Southampton. Yeah. I don't disagree with that either. You know, I'm hoping that Fulham get dragged into it as well. But you know, well, Fulham have had a good start, so mm. I mean, well, this is it. There's still a long way to go yet, isn't there? I mean, at the moment, in your top ten, you've got Nottingham Forest and Crystal Palace. When was the last time they were both in the top ten at the same time? Probably yeah. about 30, well, you know, thirty years ago, anyway. Um, so who knows? But. Yeah, I mean, I do think there are various sides there. And I don't think outstaying there welcomes the right way of looking at it. But maybe time has come for that reset. I mean, I mean, Hassan Huttle's done a very good job to keep Southampton where he has. Yeah. Uh, last, I mean, you know, three or four years or however long it's been. I mean, you know, gone are the days where um, you would see a Southampton side like the one which Ronald Koeman had, for instance. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's just a completely different club there now. Um so, yeah, I mean, I do think they are going to start struggling a bit. Um, I mean, Liverpool will start picking up form at some point. Man United are going to start winning games. I can't see them going down. Um, no. Leicester, I think Leicester will probably stay up. Um, but Everton, yeah. I think they I was amazed they stayed up last season, to be fair. <laughs> I think they, you know, I think they're going to really, really struggle. I mm. think they're really going to struggle. And Southampton, for me, you know, even though Rebo looks quite good, I just mm. don't think that they've got, you know, I just don't think they've got it. I don't think they've mm. got, you know, the actual power to... And what happens if James Ward-Prowse gets injured? Mm. You know, well, everything goes through him. You, when you ask the question, what happens if Matt Letizier gets injured? Yeah. Yeah, very true. Years ago, um, you know... If Matt Letizia did get injured, you know, they fell off, didn't they? Hmm. So, yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be a very difficult season, but hmm. hopefully, fingers crossed, there is three worse sides. Um, if we do go down, yeah, you know... It's not the what, end of the world. No, no. And the Championship is a great league, 
But mm. being a yo-yo club, yeah. Do you think what is the secret to doing that? Because there is teams, mm. you know, which we can pick throughout the years mm. who have gone down and stayed down. Yep, Ipswich Town, for instance. They spent yeah. seven years in um the championship and um they've been out of it now for the last three in League One. Yeah, yeah. Classic yeah. example. Yeah, and you know, there's plenty of others. Um, of course, we can mention Reading, we can mention Sheffield Wednesday, uh, um, Derby. Uh, Derby, well, you know, they tried to get back there, gambled away everything, didn't they? And um, ended up in League One. So there is teams that do stay down there. But well, what is the secret between behind Norwich being that yo-yo team? I guess Fulham... You know, on probably a smaller scale, I don't yeah. think Fulham are in exactly in the same mm. criteria, are they? Mm. Well, I mean, when we got relegated in 2020, I think, I mean, there were a number of things which we did all worked in our favour. I mean, the first thing was, I mean, we still had a lot of the squad left over, which mm-hmm. had been promoted before. I mean, we still had Timo Pukki, we still had Bundia, we had Cantwell, we had Aarons, who'd emerged during the previous promotion season. We still had Tim Krull, Grant Hanley. So we still had the core of that side, which helps. And I think, secondly, I mean, the things, well, I mean, it was the manager, I think, because, I mean, I don't know what Daniel Farker said to the players in the summer of 2020 to pick them up after they got relegated. Um no idea what on earth he said, but whatever he did worked. Um, I mean, there was certainly no re- relegation hangover that season. Mm. Uh, so I do think astute management is part of it, and astute management can mean a number of different things. Um, and the second thing was as well, I mean, we were quite careful, I think, with um, the players we brought in because we we signed Ollie Skip on loan from Spurs. This is someone who now plays week in, week out for Spurs in the Premiership, providing he's not injured. And this is it. I think, you know, one or two smart moves, retaining the right players. Um, and I think the other thing is, I mean, just sticking to the way we played and what we believed in helped as well. Um, I mean, maybe sometimes when clubs come down, um, they kind of got what got them there in the first place. What do you think, going back to this game, mm. what do you think Norwich are going to do? And what do you think Dean Smith's going to do? Do you think he is going to rest the main crux of first team players or will Mm. he think right okay this is an opportunity to go for it yeah i'll be perfectly honest i think scott parker will rest the majority of the players Mm. who played against arsenal yeah i think pearson might play Mm. um i think anthony might play and i think solanke will play if he's fit to do so, just to make sure that he's ready for mm. the Liverpool game. But other than that, I think it could be all change. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I mean, I'm expecting Dean Smith to play a strong side, really. And I mean, the good thing is he has got strength and depth, so he does have people he can move around. Um, I mean, looking at the goal, I mean, I expect Angus Gunn will get a game, or Michael McGovern might. I mean, I think he'll rest him cruel for that. He normally does. Um, up front, I mean, Josh Sargent at the moment is the man of the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if um, he rests him for next Saturday's trip to Sunderland. Um, but that means, you know, I mean, Timo Picky will probably be recovered from his injury by then. Who knows? If not, he'll probably give Jordan Hugel a game. So he does have options. Um, I think Milo Rashika will get a start. Um Adam is still coming back from injury, so not too sure there. Cantwell will probably start. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm expecting him to play Gabriel Sara. I mean, the guy we signed from Brazil. Yeah, Sao Paulo to be yes, yeah, Sao Paulo to be um precise. Um, back in he the probably summer, probably feels right at home in the, that shirt, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, well, this is last season shirt. Um, I don't yeah. think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this is it. I mean, I mean, even if he rotates it and makes five changes, he's still going to have a squad which is very, you know, look very good um, on paper at championship level. So, yeah, he'll change it, but it will be a strong side. Yeah, I think, I, I think he'll, Scott Parker, mm-hmm. Anthony Pearson and um, Solanke, if he's fit, I mm-hmm. think will probably start 
Um, I think Neto will get his chance in goal, of course, mm-hmm. signed from Barcelona. So that's, you know, a bit of a coup. Probably mm-hmm. Metham and James Hill at the back as well. Give James Hill a run out. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, it will be a lot of changes. We'll have, probably have Christian Sadie as well make an appearance. Um, so there's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, but it will see, show us how much depth and strength we've got against a good yeah. side. Um, what's your hopes for Norwich this season? Do you, you know, because I'm, I would predict that you will be one of the top two. You know, yeah. I think, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you look at the league table as it mm-hmm. stands at the moment. I think the other team are top of the league. Yeah. Which is Sheffield United. I think Sheffield United would be strong. Well, I mean, for me, I mean, after last season, as far as I'm concerned, the club owes us a good season. Mm-hmm. End, end of argument. Not that we have a God-given right to have one, but I do expect the players to be um, producing one. Um, you know, I think we deserve to see something after what we saw last year. Um, I mean, if we finish in the playoffs, fine, I'll happily take it. Top six is top six. Um, are we good enough to finish second or first? When I look at our squad on paper, yeah, I think the argument's there for that to happen. Um, but this is it. I mean, that's the thing about that league. I mean, you do not know what's going to come out of anywhere. I mean, if I look at the start we've had, mm. we, I mean, historically, we start slow anyway. So it's nothing really to be worried about. But what I want to see over the next few weeks are telltale signs which suggests to me that we will have a good season. So one thing we haven't done yet is win an away game. And for me, I mean, if we go to Sunderland on Saturday, play badly, scrape a 1-0 win or a 2-1 win or something like that, fine, fair enough, because you use that as a springboard. And I remember a couple of years ago, we went to Rotherham, um, fifth game of the season, we won 2-1. We were awful. We conceded a penalty. I think we conceded a second one. I can't really remember, but we were we were awful to watch. But we scraped a 2-1 win. Next away game, Bristol City, we played them off the pitch um, with some really fantastic football. This is it. I mean, you need to, you know, win games like that to give you a bit of confidence and then use them as a springboard. Um, I, mean, for, I mean, for me, I mean, good sides, yeah, beat the sides around them, beat the sides beneath them. Um, very good sides beat the sides above them. The great sides beat the sides above them home and away. Yeah. And I've seen all of those variations from Norwich sides throughout the year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, get an away win in the next couple of weeks um, against somebody, and then I'll start to think, mm, OK. If you beat Sunderland, mm. you know, on Saturday, you know, because, of course, Sunderland have just been promoted. They haven't started badly, actually. They haven't, no. 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 no, would that be you know? Would that be a marker, or would it be a case of right? Okay, let's wait until we play somebody who's going to be right up there. You know, For Sheffield United or right, Watford. Or... The right direction, purely and simple. Um, I mean. I mean, beating Sunderland's not going to make our season, with all due respect to Sunderland, and they're probably going to say say the same thing about playing us and beating us if they do. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I just look at it from the point of view that an away win there is a morale boast, boasting room a win, sorry, and gives us, you know, some hope that we can actually go away on the road and start winning games regularly like we've done, you know, the last few times we've been promoted. Um, we've got West Brom at home yeah. towards the end of September. They've had a bit of a shaky start. Everyone's expecting them to do well at the moment. We've got Coventry in our next home game. Um, people, I think some people were expecting Coventry to have a good season. Yep, they are, last time I checked the league table, floating around somewhere near the bottom. So, yeah, it's early doors. Someone's mm. going to come out, out of nowhere and start challenging for it. I mean, Sheffield United have had a strong start. Strong starts mean nothing. Yeah, no, very true. And look at look at the last time Norwich were in the league yep. with us. Um, we had Barnsley up there, didn't we? Yeah, I'll tell you something interesting about that season. Mm. The two sides we got relegated with from the Premiership, Watford and Bournemouth, both did the double over us mm. in quite convincing fashion. Yeah. And, I mean, this is it, really. I mean, 
I found it quite telling, really, that Watford and Bournemouth did the um, double over us. Um, whereas, I mean, with all of the other championship sides we played, I mean, OK, fine. I mean, there were some games where we were very lucky to get something like Middlesbrough away that season. Um, or, I mean, Brentford, when we got a point in the last five minutes, things like that. But we were more than a match for the other sides. But we struggled against the sides we got relegated with. And I thought when we back, went back up, I mean, is this a bit of, um, is this trying to tell us something? Maybe I'm looking into that a bit too deep. Mm. And I mean, the other way of looking at it as well is Watford and Bournemouth, fine against us. But I mean, this is the same Bournemouth that struggled to get into the playoffs and the same Watford, which, um, OK, fine, got finished in the top two. But again, struggled with consistency and had manager changes. Yeah. You know, maybe they were, you know, more suited to playing a, you know, a side which had been in the Premiership recently, as opposed to sides playing in the Championship. Whereas we were more suited to playing sides which were in the Championship, as opposed to sides which we've been in the Premiership with. Surely, with Watford, you know, they've got to. Well, if they Stop change their manager, that'd be an improvement, wouldn't it? Yeah, if they change their manager, you know, several times this season, I just can't see. Which I think they probably will. Well, let's wait and see. But yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I, I think surely the wheels have got to fall off there at some point. Mm. And it would be quite funny as well. Well, I mean, in fairness, the Watford owners have been saying we've learned from our mistakes, we've learned from history. Well, let's wait and see what happens. Um, I mean, if I look at Watford and Burnley, who came down with us, um, I mean, if you ask me, right, OK, which of those two are more likely to come back up? I'd have said Watford. And the reason why I would not have selected Burnley is because of the mess Burnley were in in the summer with having to pay £60 million to their owners or whatever it was. Um, but actually, I mean, Burnley are probably in a better you know, place to do it than Watford are. Yeah. No, very true. Very true. And there was all sorts with, you know, Burnley, wasn't there? You know, at mm -hmm. the end of last season, they had loads of players out of contract, but I think they've mm -hmm. done some quite shrewd business, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so of course this is a welcome distraction for us. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not against a Man City or an Arsenal or a Liverpool. Mm. Um, you was here last this time last we year. We played four times last season. <laughs> <laughs> Twice in the and in each cup, and they beat us in the, in each game. So yeah. You know, how do you think this is going to go? To be honest, I could put a finger in the air and, you know, probably yeah. be completely wrong. Yeah, I think that's a fair way of looking at it. Um, all right. Well, I think there will be two outcomes. I mean, two things I think, I mean, I think will happen. Well, either one of these, of course. One is we win it in 90 minutes or we win it on penalties. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to penalties, actually. Mm. Wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it's going to be a 6 nil. This yeah, time. no, I will be. I think, I think on paper, Bournemouth are, are a match. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, your squad is not too dissimilar from the one you had last season, and not much has been done to it. So, arguably, it's a championship level squad. It will be a very evenly matched game. Would you say that though? Because some, t this is a question actually mm. that's just come to mind, and yeah, go on. which I was speaking to the Arsenal. Um, fan mm -hmm. uh, Arsenal fan TV about. I said that our midfield, yeah, last season and the season before was a Premier League midfield because you got the likes of Lerma, Lewis Cook, Philip Billin. Um, you had Arn out Dan Juma, in yeah, the first season round. Last time, yeah, yeah. Um, personally, that's a Premier League midfield, but maybe we was lacking in other areas. Well, it was a Premier League midfield. Yeah, but you've got to. It, here's the role reversal question: mm. Would you say that there's parts of that Norwich side which you could say that's a Premier League midfield, that's a Premier League defence, it's a Premier League attack force? Individually, yes. Collectively, no. Um, I mean, if I look at last season, I mean, if there was one part of our side which really let us down, it was our midfield. Um, yeah, I mean, there are premiership quality players in that side, but there are quite a lot of championship level ones as well, really. Mm. Yeah, and likewise, I think there is players within our ranks which 
are going to really well just mm. won't make it in this league. Just no. won't make it in this league. And you know, it's not that they're bad players, it's just because the league is so tough. Mm. You know take take Saturday for example. Um last season, of course, our defence were coming up against the likes of Peterborough. You know, the likes of Derby, the likes of Reading, the likes of, um, you name them. You know, even the better sides, mm. UPR, Stoke. It's a bit different when you, or you're you coming up against Martinelli, Gabriel Jesus, um, mm. Haaland, you know, yeah. you name it. You know, it, it, it's, it's just so... There's such a gap between mm. the qualities there that... And even when you look at the lower Premier League sides, let's take Wolves, for example. Um, because They've I think just they'll... spent £40 million pounds on a new striker, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There we go. Um, but Neves, you know, of course, Neves, quality player. Is there somebody of that quality in the Championship? Not that I can think of. No. No, exactly. Um, the one team that is surprising me in the Premier League actually is Brighton. That's an interesting one, really. I think, I mean, one thing I would happily say about Brighton is that Graham Potter has done a very good job at keeping the core of that side together mm. and building it and evolving it over time. Yeah. And you've got to look at what Eddie did with us. Yeah. And I think sometimes those man managers that get the best out of those players, but look at look at Newcastle. We had this conversation mm-hmm. actually on our podcast. Um, look at Joe Linton, mm. for example. Under Steve Bruce, um, it was shit, wasn't he? Let's be, put it nicely. It was crap. Well, he couldn't hit a cow's backside of a banjo to use an old football cliche, could he? Um... But under Eddie Howe, Somehow he's become a box to box player yeah. who has taken off and looks completely different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it goes to show, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's other players in that Newcastle side where, um, you know, I haven't watched a great deal of Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they put up a, such a good fight against Man City today. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it was. A brilliant game to watch. Absolutely brilliant game to watch. But, you know, I'm sure there's other players who, you know, I didn't realise weren't playing that well under Bruce. Mm. Who Eddie's got playing. And mm. that that's what Potter's doing, isn't it, really? Mm. Well, I mean, if you look at Brighton, I mean, previous manager was Chris Hewton. Yep. Who has a bit of a reputation for playing defensive football. Mm. Yeah, and well, look at what he did at Forest and where they are now. (laughs) If Hewton had stayed there, they might have ended up in League One instead of the (laughs) Premier League. But yeah, yeah, and they wouldn't be spending. I think they've spent 150 million so far, and they said they haven't stopped spending. Yeah, I I think Forest will stay up. in all honesty, I can't. I mean, okay, fine, they'll have one or two bumpy moments, but I think they will stay up. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't see them going down. Actually, mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, it's going to be tough for us. Money they've spent, but yeah, yeah, I think Cooper will keep them out of trouble. Yeah, and I think you know when January comes, if they are a little bit of risk, I think they've got that money to spend more. Whereas. <laughs> You know, we're a little bit more sensible. We're going to do things probably the right way. And, yeah, you know, well, is that well, is it the right way? I mean, it's, I mean, okay, fine. Have, you know, having money to spend is a good thing, but it always depends on how you spend your money. I mean, if I look back at last summer, we spread, as I was saying earlier, I mean, we spread our budget on our squad way too thinly. Mm. Um, and look where it got us. <laughs> well, yeah. Return yeah. to. You'll go up though again, won't you? 
yeah, eventually we'll we'll go up again. You know, one day. I'm not going to um commit to um it being this season. Not yet. <laughs> Come on, I'll, Rob. I'll be on the final of the season when we play Blackpool. I'll tell you. <laughs> Come on, Rob. You know you know what you do. You go up. Yeah. You go down. You go up. You go down. Um and. To be honest, it sounds quite fun, but it probably wasn't last season. So, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the next 35 games for us aren't going to be like that Arsenal game because I can imagine that would be horrid. Well, I saw a fair few of those last year and I can tell you now it's not pleasant watching it. Mm. Uh, and yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might need it. I think we might need it. But no, thanks so much for coming on again, mate. And, you know, fingers crossed. You never know. You might come back up into the Premier League and we might still be here. Um, otherwise, you know, actually, if you do go up, mm. doesn't that mean Fulham go down? Or it means Bournemouth. Actually, well, yes, that is um, how the um, it works at the moment. We go up, they go down. We go up, they go down. Um when was the last time you played them? About the same. I mean, the last time we played Fulham, twenty eighteen, I think. Yes, it was 2017, 2018. And there's never been more than one league between you. Um, in recent years, yeah. But I mean, if you go back a few years, I mean, Norwich in the Premiership, Fulham in the old Fourth Division. Yeah, that's a going yeah, battle. I suppose. It's going back a long time ago, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, no, thanks so much again for joining us. And, you know, all the very, very best. And, you know, thank fingers you. crossed. Yeah, thank you, mate. Fingers crossed you can come back up and we'll still be here to greet you. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. And thank you, everybody, for joining me on this Opposition Preview Show. Please do remember to hit the like, the subscribe and the bell button to be alerted to any new videos we do here on the channel. Please do check out all of our interviews. We've recently had Eddie Mitchell on the show. So do check out Eddie's version of events of his time at the club. Also, we've had Vince Bartram, Sean Teal. Of course, we've had Paul Mitchell. There's lots, lots more that I could mention. Um, but do just check through the channel. I'm sure you'll find something you like. But please do remember to subscribe because it does mean the world to us here. But until the next video, up the cherries and I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs>